to look at that. Okay, camera. we're back in Boston, everybody. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech coverage. This is Reinforce 2022, AWS's big security conference. We're here in Boston, the convention center where theCUBE started in 2010. Haiyan Song is here, she's head of security and distributed cloud services at F5, and she's joined by Dan Woods, who's the global head of intelligence at F5. Great to see you again. Thanks for coming to theCUBE. Dan, first time, I believe. Yeah, happy to be here. All right, good to see you guys. How's the, how's the event going for you all? It's been just fascinating to see all those uh, new players coming in and taking security in a very holistic way. Uh, very encouraged. Yeah, Boston in, in July is, is good. A lot, of, a lot of action to Seaport. When I was a kid, there was nothing here. A couple mob restaurants and that's about it. And uh, now it's just like a booming I'm, I'm just happy metropolis. to see people in, in person, finally. Is this your first years. event since? Uh, it's since, maybe since, my second or third. Since, third. Okay, since right. uh, everything opened up. And I tell you, I am uh, done with Zoom. Yeah, I mean, it's very clear. People want to get back face to face. Yeah. It's a whole different dynamic. I think you know the digital piece will continue as a complement, but nothing beats belly to belly, as Absolutely. I like to say. All right, Hayan, let's start with you. So, you guys do a, a security report every year. I think this is your eighth year, the yeah. app security report. Yeah. Um, I think you, you noted in this report the growing complexity of apps and integrations. What, did you, what, are you, what were your big takeaways this year? And so, like you said, this is our eighth year, and we interview and talk to about 1,500 of like companies and IT decision makers. One of the things that's so prevalent coming out of the survey is complexity that they have to deal with, continue to increase. It's still one of the biggest headaches for all the security professionals and IT professionals. And that's explainable in a way if you look at how much digital transformation has happened in the last two years, right? It's an explosion of apps and APIs that's powering all our digital way of working uh, in the last two years. So it's certainly natural to, to see the complexity has doubled and tripled and, and uh, we need to do something about it. And, and the number of tools keeps growing, the number of players keeps growing. I mean, so many really interesting, you know, they're really not startups anymore, but well-funded new entrants in, into the marketplace. Were there any big surprises to you? I mean, you're a security practitioner, you know this space really well. Anything jump out like, whoa, that surprised me. Yeah, it's been an interesting discussion when we look at the results, right? You know, some of us would say, gosh, this is such a big surprise. How come people still, you know, willing to turn off security for the benefits of performance? And, and as a security professional, I will reflect on that. I said, it's a surprise or is it just a mandate for all of us in security, we got to do better. And because security shouldn't be the one that prevents or add friction to what the business wants to do, right? So it's a surprise because we said, how can, after all the breaches and, and, and security incidents, people are still, you know, the three quarters of the uh, interviewees said, well, you know, if we were given a choice, we'll turn off security for performance. And I think that's a call to action for all of us in security. How do we make security done in a way that's frictionless and they don't have to worry about it, they don't have to do a trade-off. And I think that's one of the things, you know, Dan in working our entire anti-automation uh, solution, one is to pr protect and the other thing is to enable. Yeah, you think about Dan, the, the I would say the, the adversary is extremely capable the ROI of cyber attacks just keeps getting better and better, and your jobs really is to, to, to lower the ROI, right? It decrease the value, increase the cost, but you're, I mean, phishing continues to be prevalent, you're seeing new, relatively new technique, island hopping, self-forming malware, I mean, it's just mind-boggling. But, but how are you seeing, you know, the a, attack change? You know, what, what's the adversary do? differently over the last you know, several years, maybe pre and post pandemic, we've got a different attack surface. What are you seeing? Well, we're seeing a lot higher volume attacks, a lot higher volume and velocity. Mm -hmm. It isn't uncommon at all for us to go in line and deploy our client side signals and see uh, the upper 90% uh, is automated, unwanted automation hitting the application. Uh, so the fact that the security teams continue to underestimate the size of the problem, that is something I see every time we go in into an enterprise, that they underestimate the size of the problem, lar largely because they're relying on 
on capabilities like CAPTCHA, or maybe they're relying on 2FA, and while 2FA has a very important role in security, it doesn't stop automated attacks, and CAPTCHA certainly doesn't stop automated attacks. So, okay, so you said 90% now, as high as 90% are, are automated. Up from where? Maybe dial back to give us a, a, a marker as to where it used to be. Well, in, in less where? than 1% is typically what all of our customers across the F5 network enjoy. Less than 1% of all traffic hitting origin is unwanted. But when we first go online, it is upper 90. We've seen 99% of all it, traffic it, being it, unwanted if, automation. But, if, but Dan, if I dial back to say 2015, was it that, that, was it that high that, that was automated back then? Or? You know, I, I don't know if it was that high then because credential stuffing was just you know, starting to kind of take right. off. Right, right. Um, but as credential stuffing became better and better known among the criminal elements, that's when it really took off. Because it pays, you're right, crime pays now. Yeah, yeah it's, it's unfortunate, but it's true. Yeah. Explain the CAPTCHA thing, because sometimes, as a user, like it's impossible to do the CAPTCHA. <laughs> you know, it's like a twister. Yeah. You know, yeah, I got that one wrong. It's, it, and, and I presume it's because CAPTCHA can be solved by, by bots. Right? Well, actually, the bots use an API into a human click farm. So they're humans to sit around solving CAPTCHAs all day long. I actually became a human CAPTCHA solver for a short time just to see what the experience was like. And they put me through the training, teaching me how to solve CAPTCHAs more effectively, which was fascinating, because I needed that training, frankly. And then they tested to make sure I solved CAPTCHAs quickly enough. And then I had solved maybe 30 or 40 CAPTCHAs, and I hadn't earned one penny US yet. So this is how bots are getting around CAPTCHAs. They just have humans solve them. Oh, okay. Now, we hear a lot at this event, you got to turn on multi-factor authentication, and obviously you don't want to use just SMS-based MFA, but Dan, you're saying not good enough. Why, explain well, that. Well, most implementations of 2FA is, you know, you enter in the username and password, and if you enter in the correct username and password, you get a text message, and you enter in the code. Um, if you enter in the incorrect username and password, you're not sent a code. So, the, pur the purpose of a credential stopping attack is to verify whether the credentials are correct. That's the purpose. And so if it's a 2FA protected login, I've done that. Admittedly, I haven't taken over the account yet, but now that I have a list of known good credentials, I could partner with somebody on the dark web who specializes in defeating 2FA through social engineering or port outs or SIM swaps, SS7 compromises, insiders and telcos, lots of different ways to get at the uh, 2FA text message. So, wow, <laughs> this is really interesting, scary discussion. So what's the answer? To, to that problem, how, how well, do high, F5 approach it? High end touched on it. We, we want to improve security without introducing a lot of friction. And the solution is collecting client side signals. You interrogate the user's interactions, the browser, the device, the network, the environment, and you find things that are unique, that can't be spoofed, like how it does floating point math or how it renders emojis. Uh, th this way, you're able to in increase security without imposing friction on, on the customer. And, Honestly, if I have to ever have to solve another CAPTCHA again, I, I, I just my blood is boiling over CAPTCHA. I wish everyone would rip it out. As a user, I, I second that request. Hi, um, technology got us into this problem. Can technology help us get out of the problem? It has to. Um, I, I think uh, when you think about the world that is powering all the digital experiences and there's two things that comes to mind that apps and APIs are at the center of them. And in order to solve the problem, we need to really zero in where you know, the epic center of the uh, attack can be and, and have the max amount of impact, right? So that's part of the reason from an F5 perspective, we think of application and API security together with the multi-tiered defense with you know, DDoS to bots to the simple bots to the most sophisticated ones and it has to be a continuum. You don't just say, hey, I'm going to solve this problem in this silo. You have to really think about app and APIs, think about the infrastructure, think about you know we're here at AWS and cloud native solutions and API services is all over. You can't just say, I only worry about one cloud. You cannot say, I only worry about VMs. You really need to think of the entire app stack. And that's part of the reason when we build our portfolio, there is web application firewall, there's API security, there's bot solution, and we added you know, application infrastructure protection coming from our acquisition for ThreatStack. They're actually based in Boston. 
Uh, so it's, it's really important to think holistically of telemetry visibility so you can make better decisions for detection response. So leads me to a number of questions. First, the first I want to stay within the AWS silo for yeah. a minute. Yeah. What do you, what's the relationship with AWS? How are you uh, integrating, uh, partnering with AWS? Let's start there. Yeah, so we work with AWS really closely. Uh, a lot of our solutions actually runs on the AWS platform. Uh, for part of our shape services, it's, it's uh, using uh, AWS capabilities and ThreatStack is purely running on AWS. We just uh, actually had an integration, maybe I'm pre-announcing something, uh, with uh, the CloudFront with our bot solutions. So we can be adding another layer of protection for customers who are using CloudFront as the WAF on AWS. Okay, so um, you integrate, you worry about a a a APIs, AWS APIs and primitives, but you have business on-prem, you have business with other cloud providers. Uh, how do you simplify those disparities for your customers? Do you kind of abstract all that complexity away? What's F5's philosophy with regard to that and, and creating that continuous experience across the states, irrespective of physical location? Yeah, I think you're spot on in terms of we have to abstract the complexity away. The technology complexity is not going to go away because there's always going to be new things coming in, the world become more disaggregated and there are going to be best of breed solutions coming out. And I think it's our job to say, how do we think about policies for web application? And you know, you're on-prem, you're in AWS, you're in another cloud, you're in your private data center. And we can certainly abstract out the policies, the rules, and to make sure it's easier for a customer to say, I want this particular use case, and they push a button, it goes to all the properties, whether it's their own edge or their own data center, and whether it's using AWS, you know, uh, CloudFront is using ORWAF. So that is part of our, adapt uh, we call it adaptive application vision, is to think delivery, think security, think optimizing the entire experience together. Using data, you know, I come from uh, a company that was very much around data can power so many things, and we believe in that too. We use a, we use a term called super cloud, which, which implies a layer that floats above the hyperscale infrastructure, hides the underlying complexity of the primitives, adds value on top, and creates a continuous experience across clouds, maybe out to the edge even someday on-prem. Is that, does that sound like, it sounds like that's your strategy and approach, and you know, where are you today in that? Is that, is that technically feasible today? Is it, is it a journey? Maybe you could describe that? Yeah, so, um, in my title, right, you talked about a security and distributed cloud services. And the distributed cloud services came from a really important acquisition we did last year, and it's, about, uh, it's called Volterra. What they brought to F5 is the ability, not only having a lot of the SaaS capabilities and delivery capabilities with a very strong infrastructure, they also kept have capability like multi-cloud networking, and you know, uh, people can really just take our solution and say, I don't have to go learn about all the, like I think using super cloud, yeah, yeah. Uh, is exactly that concept is, we'll do all the hard work behind the scenes, you just need to decide what application, what user experience, and we'll take care of the rest. So that solution is already in the market, and of course there's always more things we can do, collect more telemetry and integrate with more solutions, so there's more insertion point and customer can have their own choice of whatever other security solution they want to put on top of that. But we already provide you know, the entire service around web application and API services and bot solution is a big piece of that. So I could look at analytics across those clouds and on-prem and actually you don't have to go to four different stovepipes to find them, is that right? Yeah, and I think you'd be surprised on what you would see. Like, you, you know, typically you're going to see large amounts of unwanted automation hitting your applications. Um, it's, I, I think the reason so many security teams are, are underestimating the size of the problem is because these attacks are coming from tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and even millions of IP addresses. So, you know, for years, security teams have been blocking by IP and it's forced the attackers to become highly, highly distributed. So the security teams will typically identify the attack coming from 
the top 100 or 1500 noisiest IPs, but they miss the long tail of tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of IPs that are only used one or two times. Because, you know, over time we forced the attackers to do this. They're scaling. Yeah, they are. And, and They're coming from residential IPs now, uh, not just hosting IPs. They're coming from everywhere. And, and wow, I mean, I, we know that the pandemic changed the way that organizations, they had to think more about network security, rethinking network security, obviously endpoint, cloud security. But it sounds like the attackers as well, not only did they exploit that exposure, but they, are maybe, yeah, even, even they the, were working from home. And then, the, you know, the, the human yeah, click right. farms, they're now distributed. Right. They're all working from home right. now. Yeah, they said was, we could take advantage of that. When I was solving <laughs> captures, you could do it on your cell phone just by walking around solving captures for money. Wow, scary world that we live in. Thank you for helping make it a little bit safer, guys. Really appreciate you coming That's on theCUBE. Right. We'll continue to work on that, and our motto is bring a better digital world to life. That's what <laughs> we're going to set out to do. I love it. All right, great having you guys. Thank you. And thank you for watching. Keep it right there. This is Dave Vellante from Reinforce 2022. You're watching theCUBE. We're right back after this short break.